فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد we are finished with the introduction that we wanted to do inshallah ta'ala today we're going to go into the explanation of the kitab nuzhatu an-nazar fi tawdih nukhbat al-fikr okay so we're going to use a lot of nuzhatu an-nazar by ibn hajar which is the explanation of the kitab nukhbat al-fikr we're going to rely on nuzhatu an-nazar and we're also going to bring other benefits from other places as well inshallah ta'ala okay so make sure everybody has a Nusatul Nadar. Uh, if you could also get the uh, Nukat on the Nusatul Nadar by uh, Shaykh Al Albani Rahimahullah Ta'ala uh, with the Tahqiq of Ali Hassan Al Halabi. Uh, Shaykh Ali Hassan Al Halabi, it would be good inshallah Ta'ala. So uh, without any further ado, inshallah Ta'ala, we'll get into the Kitab. I'm going to use the board. So anytime I feel like there's a need for me to go to the board and write on it, I will, insha'Allah ta'ala. قال الإمام الحافظ أحمد بن علي بن حجر العسقلاني ابن حجر رحمه الله تعالى is غني عن التعريف. That's why I didn't talk about his biography. He's very well known. And insha'Allah ta'ala, all these scholars whose books we study, whose biography we haven't really spoken about, don't worry, rest assured, we're going to touch on each one one day by themselves and there's a plan i have inshallah ta'ala which is to go through the scholar females there were and also the ulama of the ummah the male that were were there the prominent scholars we always hear their names who they are what their biography is and, and reality pertaining to them inshallah ta'ala but al imam al hafiz ibn ahmad ibn ali ibn hajar al asqalani he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi alladhi lam yazal aliman qadira, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin alladhi arsala ila al-nasi bashiran wa nadira, alladhi arsalahu ila al-nasi bashiran wa nadira, wa ala ala Muhammadin wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira, amma ba'd. Fa'inna attasanifa fi istilah ahli al-hadith qad kathurat, the author starts with the Basmala. So he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And every munasabat, every opportunity, we mention that starting with the Basmala is a sunnah fi'liya. Meaning it's a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in doing it. Meaning he's following the Prophet in this particular action. The Prophet is the one who whenever he sent a message, he would say the Basmala. He would say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And of course, it is following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well, as Allah started the Qur'an with what? Allah started the Qur'an with uh, basmala, every surah except surah to tawbah Every surah in the Qur'an that you see, you realize that Allah starts with the basmala, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So this is iqtida'an bi kitab Allah azza wa jalla, following the book of Allah and also following the messenger. But what are we following the Prophet in? Sunnah Fi'liya The Sunnah Fi'liya is two types Sorry, the Sunnah is three types, right? So we have Sunnah Qawliya we have Sunnah Fi'liya and we have Sunnah Takhiriya, right? So Sunnah Qawliya means what? That which the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam said. And what the Sunnah Fi'liya is what the Prophet Sallallahu did and Sunnah Takhiriya is what the Prophet Sallallahu consented to, right brothers? Are we all together on that? Sunnah, Sunnah what? Qawliya Regarding the basmala, is there a 
Sunnah in terms of the Prophet saying something about it? Yes. There's a hadith which the, uh, they say, Kullu Amrin, and it goes on. Kullu Amrin bari la yubda fi bi Every affairs in which Bismillah is not started with is a disconnected matter. There's no barakah in it. It's deficient. Does that make sense? This, we say, is weak. We weaken that narration. So we don't have any sunnah qawliya in regards to the Prophet in when it comes to the basmala, do we? So we're only left with a sunnah fi'liya, which is that the Prophet, whenever he sent a letter to the leaders, he would start with what? So his action is a sunnah here for us. Does that make sense? So that's why we say there is no authentic sunnah qawliya in regards to the basmala. All the narrations that have come are weak. We're only left with what? Sunnah fi'liya. In other words, meaning that the Messenger alayhi salatu salam, he would, uh, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would send a message to the leaders. And when he sent the letter to the leaders, he would write on there, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So that's the sunnah fi'liya we have in this regard. Does that make sense? So this, oh, 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 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah in the name of Allah, ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim. Okay? So we have Bismillah. The scholars, they say, we're going to do a simplistic analyzation of the basmala. And every time we do a book, what we will try to do, inshallah ta'ala, is we'll try to add something onto it, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah wishes. So we have the bismillah. So we have bis, bismillahi, and then we have ar-Rahman. And then we have Ar-Rahim, right? Are we together? So we have Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. In the Arabic language, we already studied something before about this. This is called Harfu Jar. Harfu. Harfu Jar. Harfu Jar is from the particles we said that when it enters into a noun, what does it do to the noun? Ilal Masjidi. Remember when we took uh, Jurumiya? What did we say? It makes it Jar. So when we say Bismillah, Millahi, we have to Millahi. Why? Because the bat is forcing it to be that. This is now called in Arabic, it's a Isim Majroor. An Isim that is made to have Jar. Who is it that made it to have Jar? The bat did. Now, the scholars, they say, the f here's where the scholars, they say the Harfu Jar here, and the Isim Majroor, what are they connected to? In the Arabic language, when I say ilal masjid to the masjid, what's the, to the masjid? What's it connected to? So the jar, the harfu jar, and the ismi majru in the Arabic language, they generally have to connect to something. They have to go towards a direction. They have to be for a reason. Does that make sense? So Bismillah in the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, what? In the name of Allah, what? Does that make sense? So the scholars now said, the thing that it's connected to, two things, is, three things have happened to it. So first thing is, the thing that it's connected to is, number one, it's muqaddar, so we can't see it. Basically, it's implicit, okay, it's, it's not explicit, rather it's, it's implicit. Number two, it's a, uh, it's uh, what? Hey, what's the third, second? Does anyone know? The first one is implicit. We can't see it, so that's easy. Hey, huh? It's what? Delay. So it's muakhar. Good. There's no benefit you telling me in English. Hey, number three. It's a fi'l. What is muqaddar is a fi'l. This is after a long discussion of each point, is a khilaf. So it's muqaddab, meaning you can't see it. It's also a muakhar. It's what? It's muakhar. It's muakhar. Are you with me, brothers? And it's also it's a fi'l. So what do, we mean, what do we mean by muqaddar? So first of all, you can't see what it's connected to. Okay, what does it mean, muakhar? It means that it's delayed, so it has to fall under Allah's name, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sah? The second is that it's a verb. 
Now this verb, the scholars they say it has to be a fi'l which is aam, a general verb. So when we, when, now that we're, we're reading Al-Nukhbat Al-Fikr and the author says in the name of Allah, what does it refer to? It means in the name of Allah I am, I am writing. Does that make sense? That's, some scholars they say no we should make it general, we should say in the name of Allah I start. Because in the name of Allah I start, it can be said when you're eating, when you're sleeping, when you're walking, when you, whatever you're doing it for. Some say no, you should make it specific to the situation of what you're doing. So anyways, it's a verb here. It says, in the name of Allah, I write. In the name of Allah, I eat. In the name of Allah, I sleep. Whatever you're doing, it's that particular verb in there. Does that make sense? So that's what Bismillah rahman So the ba, the harf the ba, which is harf jar, the ism, which is ism majroor, and also uh, it's both connected to, as I said, fi'il, muqaddar, which is mu'akhar. Now we move on to the word, uh, we move on to the name Allah. Allah is a lafdul jalala. Allah is what? Allah is what? Lafdul jalala. So it says lafdul jalala, first of all. Does anyone know what is it, what is it grammatically? Hey, what's Allah? So it, it's the root where it comes from is Aliha. Ya lahu ma'lu, ilah. Very good. But what is it grammatically in the context right now? In the name of Allah? Bismillah. Yeah? So what's, it, what's Allah's name? Sa'ad, what is it? If it's Ismail Jalur, where is the Harf Jar? Yeah? Huh? What's Mudaf in Ali? Lafdul Jalal, where's the Mudaf? Yeah? So you say Ism is Mudaf and Allah is Mudaf in Ali. Yeah, is that right? What do you guys think? Okay, you, you guys want to know. But you and you and you, three of you are one. Samit, fadal. It's a mudaf from Ilay. Hey? Why did he say it's a sifa? Yeah? Ah. It's a mudaf from Ilay. It's what? Mudaf from Ilay. And Ar Rahman is what? Sifa and Al Rahim is what? Sifa. Both description. That's what Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim is. Okay? Each of these terms we're going to see later, inshallah ta'ala. Are you with me? So now in, the, in here, we actually, have, we actually have here manifest in front of us the what? The three types of majroor in Asma. Sah? When ism is a majroor, there are three things that make it majroor, right? In, in Nahaw, there's no third thing. Sah? So the first one is that it is ism, majroor, right? The second is if it's more. And the third if it's from the tawabi' right? If it's from any of those three, then it's a majroor. All of that we're going to take in ajroomiyah. But you see how it's interconnected. And how all of them are. Very good. So the author says, Bismillah in the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. The scholars, they say, what's the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? Why would they ask that question, what's the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim? The reason why the scholars would ask is because both of Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are taken from the root word Ar-Rahma. They're both from the name Ar-Rahma. So what's the difference then? If they're both from the same word, what is the difference? Are we all together, brothers and sisters? Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim are both from the root word Ar-Rahmah. So Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, both of them come from Sifatu. Sifatu. Sifatu Sifatul Rahmah. They both come from the characteristics of Ar-Rahmah. What is the difference? The scholars, they differ amongst themselves in two views. What's the difference? Are you with me? They differed. They said that Sif Ar Rahman is what? Is Amma. So we say Sifa 
it's wasi uh, or amma. We say if you want. It's very generic. Ar Rahman means merciful to everything, the believer and the non-believer. And Ar Rahim is khas to who? It's khas to the believers. That's one view. That's one view held by the scholars. So that's all one view. Okay. We are now we're left with the second view. Okay. The second view is, the second view is that Ar Rahman is what sifa. Thatia. And Ar Rahim -Rahim is what? Sifa Fi'liya. What does Sifa Dhatiya, Sifa Fi'liya mean? Sifa Dhatiya means that which is connected to Allah alone. Just like Allah hears and Allah Ta'ala, He sees these are characteristics that are connected to Him. Sifa Fi'liya are actions that are connected to His actions. He does them. It's things He does, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Sifa Fi'liya is something that is connected to Allah's will. He doesn't always do this. Um, as for Sifa Dhatiya, he's always doing it. He's always got it. He's always, uh, like Allah is always hearing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always uh, knowledgeable. That's all Sifa Dhatiya. Sifa Fi'liya is Allah descending. Allah is not always descending. He only does that when he wants to de descend, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Sifa Fi'liya. Sifa Fi'liya. Does that make sense? Allah talks, and Allah only talks when he wants to talk. Okay? Allah is not always talking. Okay? Sifa Fi'liya. Huh? Sifa? Sifa? Fi'liya. These are the topic, the point that we're talking about uh, uh, particularly right now. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? So those are the two views regarding uh, the difference between Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Very good. They also dis disputed amongst themselves, is the name Allah Mushtaq? I mean, is it rooted from something? Or is it Ghayru Mushtaq? And we leave that for another discussion, inshallah ta'ala. Like, is the name Allah taken from somewhere, or is it not? We'll leave that for, some, from us for, for another time. But you can see just the name Allah, Bismillah, just this, this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, there's many things that we can do. And all we've analyzed so far is really a grammar. If we went into the fiqh in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is Bismillah an ayah of every surah, or is it not? Is the Bismillah the ayah of Surah Al-Fatiha, or is it not? And etc. And then we go to the issue of al-jahr bil basmala Can we read Bismillah loud when we're praying in the salah? Can we not? It's masail adida that's connected to Bismillah. So Bismillah, Bismillah is not just a, it's not light. It's very, 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 very. There's many fiqh and many matters pertaining to it. Itself can be made into a month's course if somebody wants to speak about it. Now, huh? Yeah. Sifa that here. It does, it's not something that's connected to his will every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has it. Okay, good. Then the author says, Alhamdu, praise. Lillahi is for Allah. Alladhi dawan lam yazal aliman qadira. In the Arab, the author here says, Alhamdulillahi praises to who? Who is his praise to? Alhamdulillah, he says. Praise is to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember in Nahaw when we took, we took the difference between Lam al Milkiya and Lamu. Yeah? Yeah, we talked about Lamu Khtisas and Lamu al Milkiya, right? When we distinguish between the two. What do we say Lamu al Milkiya is for? The Lamb of ownership. What do we say it's for? Things that are tangible. So here when we say Alhamdulillah, what do we, what do we say? Is it Lamul Milkiya or Lamul Ikhtisas? It's Lamul Ikhtisas. It's the Lamb for the, the Hamdala, the praise is specific for Him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Good. Alladhi the one, meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Lam yazal aliman qadira. You will tend to, you will tend to see this a lot. You will tend to see this a lot, brothers, which is Lam Yazal. Lam is a nafi. 
Yazal has ma'na in nafi in it, a meaning of negation in it. The Arabic language, negation and negation, what does it equal? So, lam yazal means Allah hasn't. So, lam means hasn't. So, lam means hasn't. And yazal means also hasn't. Roughly in translation. Okay, if I give a loose translation. Are we all together? But we have two negations. And when two negations come together, there comes out of it affirmation. Okay, even in English. The Arabic, even in English is like, if you negate, then you've affirmed. That's why they say, nafyu nafyu ithbat. Nafyu nafyu ithbat. Negation and negation is affirmation. So when the author says, alhamdulillah, lam yazal aliman, is him saying, alhamdulillah, praises to Allah, the one who is alim qadir. The one who has always been alim and he's always been qadir. Alim, alim, um, alim and means, what does alim and means? I mean, what does alim and mean? Alim and means, what does alim and mean? It means one who has, who possesses, huh? One who possesses. One who possesses knowledge, right? Can we attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowledge? So can we say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge? And we can say he's an alim. Sahih? Huh? We can, right? There's a fa'idah I'm going to share with you all, inshallah.